back in the day, people just didn't believe it was possible. We used to talk to people and folks would be like, well, maybe Netflix and Google can, can release code every day, but no sane company could ever attempt to release more than like once in six months and stuff like that. Automate what you can, but just the idea that even you have a consistent build pipeline and you have a consistent deployment pipeline. Like that sounds like, uh, that, that was crazy for some companies 10 years ago, right? They, everybody built locally, deployed locally, did their thing. And like now like people are, you know, chat opsing, watching their, their babysitting their rollouts and they can get information like live in Slack as to, you know, how the rollout's going. Like that's a very different experience for the average developer than before. And I think that's not gonna go away. There's this idea of software being correct or incorrect or being secure or insecure. Um, and there certainly are things that you can discover in CI or in DevSecOps, you know, uh, dependency checks and things like that. But a lot of software behavior is totally heuristic and depends on the workload. And unfortunately, you can't really predict how something's going to work these days until you deploy it into production. It's less about, um, people still have roles, people still have specializations and things that they do better, right? And that, that they're, you know, truly responsible for in a job sense but everyone is accountable for pointing out hey why is that thing not working as it should be or like why aren't we why aren't we doing as much as we could be doing in that particular space when no one is on call everyone's on call all the time right? and that's, that's also the situation you don't want to be in if that deployment is negatively affecting some other person's service level objective if they're like slo is starting to flag because of your release you should know about that and we noticed that people got paid like on average twenty thousand dollars more if when they were called DevOps engineers as opposed to ops or sysadmin or something like that. And so we just said, okay, like go get paid more. Blocking developers in any way is negative for the, the company overall, right? How has DevOps changed hiring and retention at companies? No developer wants to <laughs> push broken code and expose their company to security vulnerabilities, but we don't teach people and we don't make it easy for them, right? You know, I was part of a team that built a um, uh, online health record system. And I knew nothing about security. <laughs> you know, I, I raised the point a couple times to you know this, this client we're working for. I was like, "Do you have people who are like looking at this? Because medical records seem like one of those things you might want to secure." And you know, their response was like, "No, you know, we'll do that. You know, when it's delivered." I was like.